What's up everybody? Happy New Year. I'm finally back. I took a little bit of a break at the end of last year. I just wanted to gather everything together, get some more parts, and just, just step away from the motor for a little bit. But it is the beginning of the new year and it is time to get back onto this motor and get it done. So the next step of this whole rebuild is we're going to be working on the short block and I'm going to be freshening up that short block. What I'm going to want to be freshening up is my actual cylinder walls inside the bores. Now the machine shop that did my machining to bore this uh, half a mil over actually did a very good job because I could still see some nice cross hatches in here but I am going to be replacing piston rings and so what I'm going to do is be deglazing these walls. Now I'm not honing them there there's a slight difference uh, I'm, I'm going to explain what deglazing is because I can see there is a slight, just uh, like a little light layer of glazing on these walls from the old piston rings that I'm just going to get rid of that little, little glazing over it. it. It's literally what it sounds like. It's just a light layer. I'm going to wipe all that off and we're going to see the fresh cross hatches again. And that's going to help break in the new piston rings. It could seem a little confusing when I say deglazing rather than honing, but when you hone a cylinder you are actually putting in the cross hatches and you use a honer which what people usually think of is it's like that um those three stones that you can put into a drill and you, you just throw all your, your um your cross hatches in there what i'm using is something different i use this thing it's called a flex hone it's a 400 grit and uh, it doesn't use stones but it does use abrasive balls you've probably seen this before and what this does is just takes that fine layer of fuel sometimes uh, the fuel can wash down cylinders if you don't tune it right it, it just takes all that off and leaves the cylinders basically fresh and ready to help break in new piston rings that's all i'm going to be doing i'm just going to be freshening up these cylinder walls making sure they're good to go checking everything else on the block and then the block will be ready to be assembled so a little info on this flex hone it is a three and a half inch flex hone which it should say which is an 89 millimeter in diameter my block is 87 and a half so this fits just a little snug which is perfect because we want it to hug the entire cylinder walls the most important thing when you're installing this into your drill is this needs to spin almost pretty much exactly straight you want no wobble in it when it's spinning so i'm going to set this up in the chuck we're gonna just keep adjusting it until we, we can get a straight shot. We got the hone all chucked up in the drill, blocks ready to go. What I'm gonna be using is WD-40. You can use motor oil, that's probably the best thing to use. I got WD for me right now and it's just easier to lubricate the inside of the walls with this. Be very liberal with this. You do not wanna do this dry because you're gonna put scratches into your, into your cylinder walls. Lubricate your cylinder wall, very good. And then you're gonna lubricate the hone, well, the, the deglazer very well. You want them both to be lubed up, very good. And when you're gonna start, you're gonna start slow. Go in, you're just gonna start the chuck slow. And once you start making it in, then you can pick your speed up. Now, your Honda calls for like a 45 degree cross hatch inside the cylinders. The best way to get that is determined by speed and stroke so depending on how fast you have the drill i'm gonna have once i get going i'm gonna have the drill all the way like fully engaged and i'm just gonna be going nice and easy with the stroke up and down and that should give us a good cross hatch but it's not really going to give us a cross hatch it's just really going to deglaze it but that's the best way to do it it's hard to explain it takes a little bit of practice but as long as you don't just sit there going really slow you, you can't really mess the cylinder walls up but just be careful Definitely one important tip is when you're ready to pull the, the hone out, don't stop the drill inside of the block. I've seen people do that. That's how you put scratches coming up out of the cylinder wall. You're gonna keep the drill going until you come all the way up and then stop the drill. That way the deglazer is constantly spinning outside of the cylinder. Do not stop the drill inside the, hone, inside the, the cylinder walls. Just 
All right, so we just made our first pass. The glaze in the cylinder walls, you can already see a difference. I mean, the, the walls weren't that caked up with much, so it's not gonna take much. I'm, I'm probably gonna do one more pass, but I wanna, I wanna show you guys the difference. So here you guys can see, this is the wall, the cylinder that was just done. These are the rest that aren't done yet. The main difference you can see is the top right here, where the compression or the combustion actually happens on top of the piston. This is the piston comes up to here, and then the rest of this is where all the combustion in the chamber, all that happens. That's why you get this little buildup. And with the deglazer, we were able to take that off and bring this, this cylinder basically to almost brand new. You can see the cross hatches right in there. We kept them nice. You can see the cross hatches in this one, but you can see a little markings from the piston. Now this is nothing grooved. This is just, just from the skirts and the rings going up and down. But here we can just see everything got really nice and clean. I probably will hit it one more time. I might not be able to get these out, but like I said, I can't feel them. So they'll be, they'll be fine. But these are the results you can't see just by deglazing a cylinder. And you could kind of see it, the color just, just there is a, a color difference. It might not be picked up on camera. This is a little darker and this just looks, it has that more of a clean aluminum look. It's, it's very simple. Like I said, I'll hit this one more time. We're gonna work our way through all of the other three cylinders. And now these are ready for new piston rings. So after a second pass on the same cylinder, here's the final look. I'm just gonna leave it right there. I actually got most of those little lines out of the walls. It's looking good at every angle. And again, just a side-by-side -side comparison, the one that's done, ones I haven't done yet. This is gonna help break in brand new rings. Really good. If I was to reuse the old rings, I probably could have just left these the way they were, cleaned them up, make sure they were good, because these were technically already worn in to the used rings, but for new rings, I'm always gonna deglaze cylinder walls. I don't really hone them, just to be honest, because I, I don't wanna mess anything up. Honing is, from what I've seen, it's, it's the same thing that I'm doing right now, but with honing, if if you run the drill a little too long, or if you hold it to a certain way, I, I feel like you can do more damage to your cylinder walls than the way I'm doing it, just because there's more, it's a flex hone, there's more flex in, in the way you can manipulate this, and that's just the way I do it. If I need any cylinder honing done, I let the machine shop do it, and I, I let them get the proper cross hatches on the cylinder walls, but I've had great success with this, and we're gonna finish it off. We're gonna see the finished product. I'm gonna finish the rest of the three, blow through them, and clean the block up. I'm gonna apply some oil inside the walls after I'm done, so that way it doesn't rust, because I am not assembling it yet. I'm not gonna put the rings or the pistons in it. So for storage, I am gonna coat the walls with oil so they don't rust, so let's blast through the rest of these. are done they came out great as you guys noticed in the in that time lapse just i can't stress it enough never stop inside the cylinder walls with the hone or with the deglaze it would just just never stop in there because if you do you're going to get those drag lines coming up so never stop i just want to make sure i get that point across because you guys can do this at home it's very simple don't be afraid to try because it's definitely it's if you are doing a rebuild and you're not going fully built like i am just even an oem rebuild 
I highly suggest just at least deglazing the cylinder walls. You don't have to hone them, just deglaze them. It just gives the walls a nice, fresh, like mating surface. I don't know if you guys, if, if you've ever worked in an auto shop and you cut rotors and you, you cut the rotor because you want that nice uh, new pad to bed into the rotor. It's exactly what we're doing. This is gonna help just break these piston rings in. And if you refresh another motor, that's not a high performance build. You put new rings on it. You want the same thing. You want those rings to seat properly. So this is exactly why I'm doing this. I'm gonna show you guys how it came out. All the cylinder walls came out great. I'm so happy with the way they came out. They kept their cross hatches. All we did was freshened up each cylinder wall and they are ready for new rings. Now, what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna spray brake clean all over this whole block and all these little areas and, uh, and these oil passages right here and the oil pressure switch. I'm just gonna spray brake clean all over and blow it all off with compressed air because I want, we wanna make sure this block stays clean. We want no contaminants in it. So let's clean this whole block off and this block is ready to be wrapped up and ready for pistons. Our block is now deglazed. It's as clean as we can get it right now. You can actually see the reflection of the light on all the cylinder walls and all the bare metal parts. We're pretty much ready to seal it. The way I'm gonna seal it is just grab some motor oil, 530, I'm gonna put it on my rag. It's a little too much, but that's all right. And what we're gonna be doing is coating these walls with motor oil. Okay, and now we can store this block without worrying about these cylinder walls rusting up. One thing I should mention because we did brake clean this whole motor is our main girdle bearing faces. They're all exposed bare metal. We need to oil those as well. And just like that, the block's all wrapped up. She's done. We're going to put her on the side. We're going to just leave this to the side and start working on the next bits of uh, prepping this. What needs to happen next is we're gonna start getting the crank ready. Even though it's a brand new crank, I mean, I do do a couple things just to make sure the crank is ready to be seated. A big thing about engine building is cleanliness. I know in the garage, it's not the most ideal place to do it. So I, when I do build a motor, I try to keep everything as clean as I can. It's a lot of cleaning and cleaning and wiping down just because it's a garage, so stuff gets messy in here. but. This is done. I do want to give you guys a sneak peek on what the next video is going to be about. So I kind of already laid this bench out, but I'm replacing wrist pins. These are upgraded wrist pins and I'm going to explain to you guys why I'm doing this. So if you are new to this channel, you enjoyed this video and you're curious about why I'm replacing wrist pins or you're just curious about how to do a complete rebuild on a K20, K24, you need to subscribe because this, this this build series is going to be great. Thank you everybody for all the wish, uh, happy new year wishes for constantly checking up on me and leaving comments. Where's part two? Where's part two? I got you guys. Part two is coming up and I'll catch you guys in the next video. I'm ready to start filming another one. Stay motivated. Keep making those streets louder. I'll catch you in the next video. And again, happy new year, everybody.